On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to install a duplex receptacle or as we all know as electrical outlets, what kind of boxes that we can use and how to wire them. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Today is going to be the very first episode of my wiring and electrical series, which we're going to be going over the basic of the basic. And if you are not comfortable working with electricity, please hire a professional electrician because working with electrical is not something to play around with it is very dangerous even with coming with basics like these i'm doing this for educational and instructional purposes only in today's project we're going to be installing a duplex receptacle or an electrical outlet and here are the tools that we'll be using and some of the materials again we have a choices of metallic non-metallic which are the plastic um, electrical boxes we have our 12 2 gauge wire some of the tools are laid out here when we're working with drywall we're going to use this and yeah so these are the most basic tools that we're going to be needing today so you want to install a brand new electrical outlet on your wall the first thing you want to figure out is the location of where you want to put it now behind this drywall are studs 16 inch centers meaning that my studs are located every 16 inches on center today we're going to be installing an electrical outlet on drywall so depending on if you have drywall already or you have exposed studs, which is probably the easiest way to do it, you wanna run your electrical before you even put drywall on to make the job easier. But most of the time, in our cases, we wanna install this in today's video anyways, is installing it on already installed drywall. Depending on your location, again, every location has different codes, but here in the US, most of the common ones and the standard is your receptacle is going to be minimum of 12 inch center, meaning that one foot or 12 inches, the receptacle's middle is going to be right there on the 12 inch mark. Now for handicaps, you're going to be doing 18 inch minimum. minimum. So you're going to go 18 inch and it's going to be up there. So standard is 12 inches minimum. That means you can go a little bit higher, but for aesthetic, you want to make your outlets at least the same height for all of them so it looks pleasing and not all over the place let's get to part two which is electrical boxes now there are many different types of electrical boxes i'm not going to cover the ceiling types because we're only going to be worrying about the electrical boxes for the wall but there are various types which is this one what i'm holding is a metal metallic one obviously it's a lot heavier and these have been around for a longer time than these plastic ones so this being around longer has many various types different designs and many other ways other than this one this is a lot more limited in designs and this one is a lot more expensive than this cheaper plastic ones but again whichever you choose it doesn't matter but the most ones what we find in newer construction style newer homes are these plastic ones again this is just one type of electrical box this one actually goes against the stud and there's other ones with the nails the, the obvious one i'll put a picture right here of that i don't have one currently but there's also ones that are on where you can put right here which just makes it easier where you can just cut a hole and then just uh, screw it right to the stud and there's also ones where we called uh old work old work uh j boxes that actually you can locate it anywhere on the drywall or anywhere on your wall because it clamps and pretty much compresses um, and attaches to your drywall and you don't necessarily have to attach it to a stud like this one this one the nail one that I'll show you right here and also this type but again today we're gonna be using this type. I really like this one a lot more secure attaching it to a stud in my honest opinion but if you're using the old work um, J box that that actually works as well too. When you're looking at these J boxes, you want to look what's inside the box, okay? There's a lot of information that's written in there. See where that it says 9, 14, 8, 12, 7, 10. Those are pretty much the right side is what determines the gauges, the wire gauges that we're using. Today, we're going to be using 12 gauge. So on the left side, it means that those are the number of wires that can fit in this box 
if you're using that um, type of gauge. So since we're going to be using a 12 gauge wire today, the maximum wires that can be inside this is eight wires. So it also says here in the volume that can be um, applied or inserted in here is 18 cubic inches. Like what I mentioned, I'm going to be using this electrical box right here. It has these um, screws right here. These J boxes have this, most of them have these indicator marks right there where it actually shows you how deep you're supposed to go through or onto the stud right there. So this gap right here pretty much gets filled with drywall. Should be flushed with the drywall that you're putting. This one, this type, you can just, it's easy because it's already, you just set it right there, put your screws on there and then it will automatically be flush. In this case, I like to use this because we're gonna be putting it, cutting out the drywall on the other side to get this in place. Now let's get to the installation part. We already know that there's a stud here, but do for instructional purposes, I'm gonna be showing you how it works here with the stud finder. There's one stud right there and 16 inch center later, you have another one on this side as well. There's a 12 inch right there and we're gonna mark it with our pencil right here. Two by fours are actually an inch and three eighths wide. So for instructional purposes, I'm gonna be placing it right against here and I'm gonna be marking it right around here. So we know where exactly where that edge is and where we're gonna be marking the center of that J box. And it's gonna be right in this middle. Here's the middle of our J box. After you match it right on the middle, I like to put my leveler on the top. With that you can go and trace it out. So there are many ways to cut this drywall. You can use a drywall saw, keyhole saw like what you see here, your utility knife to score it, and you can also use an oscillating tool. You wanna keep cutting on the same area till you actually cut through this drywall. Okay, so we actually cut right there. Then you can use, with this one, you can use your keyhole saw or your drywall saw. Also use this oscillating tool. This one's by Works. Instructional purpose only, I made a wider cut right here so I can show you where that indicator mark is hitting the stud, okay? But technically, if this wasn't for instructional purpose only, I wouldn't make this cut, okay? I just wanted to show you that part. There's two methods that I'll be showing you how to wire this receptacle today. And the first method is gonna be called the end of run receptacle, meaning that there's only one wire going through this box, which is one hot, one neutral, and one ground. The other method is the middle of run receptacle. Now that one's a little different, I'm gonna wire it. But first, so we don't get anybody confused, I'm gonna show you how to wire an end of run receptacle. Now it's time to install wire. Now the wire that I'm gonna be using today for the receptacles, depending on your code, I'm using a 12-2 gauge wire. Now if you're gonna be fishing this wire out, for example, um, you're gonna try to get a new piece of wire to go through this box, we're gonna, you can use this fish tape. Now this one you extend out and then when you're ready to pull that wire out of there, you just turn it to pull it out. Pretty much you take your wire cable, feed it through here, okay? Fold it and then take some electrical tape, this, and fish it out like so and you can pull this right through the box. If you're working with any type of electrical wiring, I highly suggest you get this tool to feed it through your walls, depending on where it's located. Um, we're gonna be using this quite often in this electrical and wiring series. So again, with this tool, I'll leave it on the description down below. We're gonna pull out about eight inches of cable through this box. So eight inches might be a little too much. Sometimes I go with six inches, but eight inches is probably the most that you can work with, with without having any issues wiring it up to the receptacle, okay? Now we're gonna go and expose the wire. Sometimes I cut only about halfway through the exact length. So in this case, four inches, you know, we're just gonna cut it open. Okay, now when you're cutting it open, be very, very careful because you don't wanna end up cutting the insulation on the hot or neutral 
wiring. Cut off that excess, cut off that excess, and now we are left with these three wires. Now the white one is the neutral ground hot wire. So now since we're using a 12 gauge wire on my wire stripper, I'm gonna go and pick the 12 gauge setting right there. 5 eighths maximum. You can go a little bit lower than that. You can even go half inch. So just try to gauge it. You don't have to go measure it each one by a tape measure. Just eyeball it just as long as you don't go over 5 eighths. And if you over strip it, you can always cut it with this cutter right there to make it even just like so. You can cut both of them at the same time and make them even in length. Now we're looking at a receptacle. We got the gold or brass, whatever you want to call it. And we got the silver. And it also states right here on the back, which one goes where hot wire. It says hot wire that goes for the black side. And then the, it says here white. You can't go wrong because it always says right there. Silver is probably closest to white. Black is that, you know, and also this is the ground wire, which is always green. If you look right here, there's also holes right here. They're called push in terminals. Um, I highly don't recommend you using these because they tend to be problematic. And there are some instances where these move around and they get those wires end up getting pushed out. And yeah, you just, I just don't like dealing with them. And again, before any work doing with electric, electrical wires, make sure that you turn off the power. Turn off the power from your breaker, please. The main tool that I highly recommend that you get is this voltage detector. This one is by Milwaukee. Again, even though you turn off the power from your breaker, even though it's off, I like to use this as my backup just in case to make sure that there's no you know electrical current or this is no power coming through here just touch it if it starts beeping red that means there is power this one obviously it's not connected but for instructional purposes yep it's not powered up so get this i'll leave it in the description down below what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the hot the black wire and we're gonna take our needle nose pliers and make a loop just like so on the neutral and same thing for our ground wire. Like so. Take your screwdriver by screwing that in. Same thing for the other side. Ground wire. Now tighten up the ground wire. Okay, so now it's all a matter of just pushing all that wire in there. You can put on the cover. So there you have it. There's our first method, which is wiring an end of run receptacle. All right, so now let's get to the second method, which is wiring a middle of run receptacle. I mean, there's two wires coming through. One is one coming from the breaker and the other one is connected to another outlet or switch. I'm gonna be showing you the right way to connect this receptacle so that in case this thing happens to fail, the other connecting receptacle or switch does not fail, okay? So we're gonna splice these two first. You can use wire nuts to connect the white and the black and the ground together, but in this case, I love using these Wagos, okay? These Wagos wire connectors are the best. Um, these are the only ones I use now um, because they're reusable they're easy to use you pretty much just insert it in one in the terminal just like what you see there and just close it close the lever and it's attached and when you once you're done if you want to reuse it later on switch back the lever it's that easy take it off pop it up and they're pretty much reusable again wagos are the way to go there's different terminal sizes terminal um, amounts on each one so there's two three four five six so I'll leave the description down below where I got these. These are revolutionary. You see, I'm gonna attach way goes on each one of these wires, only on one set though. So I got a way go right on the black, the hot, the neutral, and the ground. I'm gonna combine the other wire as well. Okay, so now we have the two wires, they're connected. We're going to make what we call a pigtail on this. So what we're going to do for the pigtail is we're going to get a piece of wire. This is probably, I don't know, six inch um, 
strip it open just like so we're gonna strip one end okay even them out looks like about the same size make those hooks same thing for the ground okay tighten that in place same thing for here go to your ground wire and again 5 8 like so all right so you're probably saying Jay why didn't you just take this white one of these white uh, these two white wires and connect it to the two terminals right here and the two hot wires to, you know connect it right here and just combine all the ground wires together instead of making this the reason for this is so that in case this receptacle fails the rest of the series that is connected in this series of wires will not go out so just in case that one of this recept one of these wires is connected to another receptacle if this fails the other one will fail if it's not pigtail okay because everything is feeding through this receptacle and you don't want that if this does fail the other receptacles will continue working because it's all connected through here now and not on the main receptacle i hope that makes sense if you have any questions on that leave it in the comment section down below like so there and that's what we have push everything in here put the cover on and we're ready to go so friends that's pretty much this video i hope you found value on this pretty much showing your first method which is the end of run method the middle of run method which is the second method that we just did and yeah everything that i taught you here is all just basics we're not going to dig deeper into you know i know there's a lot of um, variables a lot of other things that might go through this wiring but everything that i taught you here is pretty much the basic of wiring okay. again friends don't forget to turn off the power from your breaker while before you work on any electrical and if you feel uncomfortable on doing any of these things again I just, i'm just doing this for entertainment and educational purposes if you are uncomfortable please consult or find a professional electrician that can do the job for you because your safety is always number one if you found value to this please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe button notification bell and stay tuned for more electrical work from this series because again this is a these are a new sets of episodes that i'll be doing concerning wiring and i'll throw in a little bit more baseboard tips and tricks on there for a while i know you guys are enjoying my baseboards and trims but let me know in the comment section below what other videos you want me to see what, what you want to learn and i'll make that video for you okay friends so again all the videos that i make on this channel are all for different options okay there's no one way to do things there are many multiple ways of doing things but again we want to be in compliance with our codes make sure you check your local codes and make sure everything is nice and wired correctly thank you once again friends i'll see you in the next episode